Well, let me just tell you, the, the, the cigar has been through 200 odd processes from the leaf that you see just here, uh, being dried, being planted, being brought together. There's four different kinds of leaf. There's the, the fillers, there's the taste leaves, and there's also the wrappers. And they're all put together in different combinations for the strength of cigar you want. And that ends up coming in like this in a non-ready-to-smoke basis. So the first thing you do is you need to cut it. Now there are, there are I tend not to cut mine, I tend all right, to, to either bite it or use my finger when I'm on the run, all right? but when I've got the ability to sit down and enjoy, I remember the great thing about a cigar is your enjoyment. So you're doing this, all right? now I've had a debate with my doctor, a very long debate, about what is the most dangerous thing in the world? Is it smoking or is it stress? We both come to the conclusion that stress is far, gr far greater harm to you. And therefore we've decided that smoking is actually really good for me. And that's my story and I'm gonna to stick to it. So you just pop it into one of these holes depending on what size of cut you like. You pull the lever down and you've got a perfectly cut cigar. This cigar is a brand called Ramon Alonas, which is quite a strong brand, but I've just had a coffee. So it's quite good after a coffee to have something with a bit of bite and taste to it. Nutty, chocolatey, coffee-ish sort of taste. All right. Now, how does that, how, you think, how does that happen with a cigar? How do you get a chocolate taste on it? There are one to two harvests of each of the fields where they're growing. All right. Now, to get the oil back into the soil, they then put a little, they put some, some planting in there that creates it, whether it's some pepper plants or some, uh, some chocolate, coffee beans, whatever they're, they're doing. They put that in, that reinvigorates and enriches the soil. And that's how you get a little bit of that taste through, some vanilla pods and so Then, the great thing about these flamethrowers are that you can actually smoke a cigar in the kitchen whilst you're making a creme brulee and you're not gonna do any harm to either. Right? I like matches, but in most places where I go to smoke, all right, the matches get blown out by the wind, either by air conditioning or by the wind. So there we've got a lovely red sheen on that cigar. I don't know if you can quite see that. And there, that's almost perfect. Now, the art of smoking a cigar is not the same as smoking a cigarette. You do not inhale. So you pull it in, you keep it in your mouth, and you let, let it go either in a very unostentatious way, or you can try and blow rings with it. But I just smoke it as I enjoy it. Now, the first eighth of an inch, you don't tend to get the real taste. The smoke's permeating up through the cigar and you're just getting, it. it by the time it gets to you, you're not really getting the taste. Well, you will. 